Good morning and welcome to Join News, your election headquarters in association with Petrosol. Clean fuel in full quantity is always a delightful experience. Cowbell Coffee, Taste It, Love It, McDan Shippen and Logistics Limited, your total logistics partner. Pat Eva Limited, your home of modern furniture. Coa FS, the immune booster for your general well-being. I am Bernice Abubedu Lamsa. Thank you so much for staying here on your election headquarters. And uh, we've been doing this since last night, bringing you all the details, touching base with our correspondents who are dotted across the country. And I am in our uh, studios at Joy News. We have a team uh, in Studio 99 seven in Kukum Limli and we'll be bringing you all that you need to know it's our continuing coverage of the 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections as you may already know there are 275 parliamentary seats up for grabs and 12 candidates are locking horns in a contest to be president of Ghana for the next four years and we've got Nane Kufado of the NPP John Mahama of the NDC Christian Kwabna Andrews of the Ghana Union Movement Ivo Kwabna Green Street CPP Ekiado the Ghana Freedom Party, Henry Herbert Latte, GCPP, Hassan Ayariga of the APC, Percival Kofi Akpalu of the Liberal Party of Ghana, and David Akpasera of the PNC. We've also got Bridget Jogmanuku of the PPP, Nana Kunedwa Jaman Rawlings of the NDP, and the only independent candidate, Alfred Kwame Isidu Walker. It's been over two hours of voting so far, and we've brought you uh, reactions across the country. It's been generally peaceful, and we have reporters spread across the entire country. And uh, apart from the incident we reported from Odududio, where uh, there was a bit of chaos with uh, voters, uh, their concerns over the setting up of polling stations. We've had uh, a generally peaceful conduct of polls. Let, let me take you now to Kojo Janssen, who's standing by in Studio 997. Hello, Kojo. Wonderful to be doing this with you once again, right? Uh, casting our mind back four years. Uh, it's great uh, to be part of this history-making moment. And my guests uh, in Studio 997 today uh, are Kofi Bentel and Clara Berry Kasati. We've been having the most engaging analysis of what is to come uh, today. But I'll tell you what I think we ought to do while we have the time. Let's very quickly have a look at what the rest of the world is saying about today's election. Okay, so here um, on our screen, we can have a look at the big headlines. Uh, DW, our partners, are, are saying in an opinion piece, which I think you should read on their website, Ghana's election between a crocodile and an alligator. Couldn't have put it better myself. Uh, and of course, uh, if we go across uh, to our very own website, myjoyonline.com, you'll see that we're talking about everything, including live updates as Ghanaians go to the polls today. The BBC is talking about six things you should know about Ghana's election today. And that's written by um, Feva Nunu, who reports for BBC Pigeon. Uh, we can take you across uh, to um, the BBC Global website, where, again, they're talking about our election. Uh, Ghana elects president in vote fielding two longtime rivals. That's the truth. Uh, they are coming together for the, uh, what, the second time? Uh, let's a uh, third time actually. Uh, let's see how it all unfolds for them. All right. So this is what the world is saying about us today, uh, and um, of course we're going to continue to bring you all the headlines from around the world. It has been, as Bernice uh, uh, said, pretty peaceful so far, and we expect it to continue in this vein all day long until polls close at 5 p.m. Uh, but we've been talking about all the different permutations and all the different angles and all the different possibilities with our two uh, panelists, analysts this morning, um, Clara Berry Cassati and Kofi Bento, both of them lawyers. Of course, uh, Kofi Bento, the um, senior vice president of Imani Africa, and Clara Berry Cassati, a law lecturer and a private legal practitioner. Kofi, I, I would love to come back to you because there were so many things we were discussing uh, before we, we had to take a, a break. 
one of them uh, being Ayawaso West Wogon. But that's not the only constituency where there are lots of eyes, lots of expectation. Uh, there are other areas of this country where it seems as if what happens there uh, is going to be some sort of reflection of what happens on the bigger scale, especially constituencies in the new regions. How important is it going to be, this fact that we even have six new regions in this election? People kind of feel they have to uh, reward them for creating the new regions. Um, there's a debate around whether that means anything at all or not, but that's a political fact. So depending on how that goes, you know, we'll see. But I think that essentially the coastal areas still hold sway. So who wins Accra, who wins the central region um, will be... A very important um, indicator of how this whole thing is going to go down. Mm. So I agree that the new regions are important and um, they will have some sort of positive effect for the ruling government. Mm. But I think ultimately, they, I don't think they will be the ones that turn things around. I mm. was going to make a point on the international press oh, yes. um, view. So if you look at what BBC is saying, so... Um, they say long-term or long-time rivals. Mm. I, I really think it's important to put this in context. When you see this in the context of Africa, mm. it could mean all kinds of negative things. And I think <laughs> we should emphasize that. These people have gone against each other for three different elections. And for whatever it's worth, each one has won one. So it's one one. And whoever <laughs> wins this one will have the edge over the other one. But... In a departure from the normal Africa story, three times they have fought an election. Just a week ago, these two people sat down to sign a document and urge everybody to go through this process in peace. They have been exemplary in their conduct. President Ekufuado, being the incumbent, having the power of the state, has been extremely respectful and restrained has respected COVID, has run this country even handedly, even through this period. President Mahama, having come back again after what you know he, he lost in the last time, has conducted himself as a proper gentleman. They have kept this nation at heart. They have urged their supporters and the nation at heart uh, at, at large, you know, to be, you know, to go through this thing properly. I think we should not take it for granted. Mm. In Africa, when you see people going for three rounds of anything especially at this high level, you can expect everything. So there's a lot to be proud of, and I wish they would state that this is a departure from what they tend to report about Africa. <laughs> yes, point well made, uh, an important one as well. Uh, it's a pity we even have to make it. Oh, yeah, uh, it's a pity. But we don't, we and know And again, sorry to be going on, but in the case of Ghana, this is not unusual. Yeah. Okay, we need to say in this, we are happy that this is happening, but we mm. didn't expect anything else. This is okay? the norm. So this is the norm with us, and mm. I hope the international press picks this up. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Clara, let, let's, let's, let's open this up. It's been four years of NPP administration under Akufuado. Now, as people go into the, the, the ballot box, just as they did in 2016, they're asking themselves uh, what, uh, which vote will make the best impact on their lives. So, so many of the big events that have occurred over the past four years are playing in the minds of voters today. I wonder which ones you think are going to be most prominent. I mean, we can go all the way back to the very beginning from the inauguration where we heard about plagiarism uh, to free SHS, you know, being one of the biggest feats uh, any administration has, you know, pulled off and continues to pull off uh, to things like even COVID-19, which is the, you know, the big event of 2020, uh, to all the things in between, whether it's issues of governance, uh, you know, the, the establishment of a, an office of the special prosecutor uh, to his resignation recently. I mean, what are the things that you reckon, the big signpost events across the past four years that Ghanaians undoubtedly will be thinking of as they cast their ballot this morning? Um, when it comes to that, I think Ghanaians, different uh, people will be looking to different things. The society is hugely diverse, so different things will matter to different um, people. I'm sure that there are some who will just look at their economic circumstances, yeah. 
somehow I expect everybody or every voter to be able to relate some of the issues to themselves. So some will look at their personal circumstances and, and decide um, which way they think will vote, they will vote to at least affect their um, personal circumstances. There are some who will also look at values. So they would look at the values at, at play and decide which values are more important to them and which ones that they, they want to, they want to um, um, follow. I, I have always believed that one of the values that holds sway for the, the Ghanaian people, including um, um, even be it being expressed in our constitution, is the value that, yes, we want an atmosphere where we have, we want equal opportunity to pursue our own um, 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 prosperity. And I, I've always believed that if you look at even the way of life of the Ghanaian people, you can see that as much. They wake up early in the morning. When I was leaving early, I saw people on the streets already mm. getting ready for their, for, for their day and all of You see a hardworking people. You see a people who have always had an interest in the affairs of their country throughout across the various facets, including even football. Mm. So you see a very involved uh, um, people in several aspects of, 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 of our national life. So I don't expect that there is one particular thing that would drive across. I expect that there would be different things for different people. People yeah. will consider a lot of different things, but invariably I expect that they would link it to themselves and then decide which ones they think are most important for mm. them and then vote in that in in that direction of course we always have the the people who have a base every yeah. political party all over the world across the world always has a base that sticks mm. with with the parties through thick and thin it's yeah. normal it happens in every society mm. so yes we are going to have um, um, th that kind of voter as well as well as a lot of even though we usually like to pretend that um, everybody in Ghana belongs to a particular party. I mm. think inwardly we know that is not true. Mm. And we know that is not true because we know that, I mean, since 92 we've changed um, 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 governments. So we know we do have certain Ghanaians who are not necessarily tied to any particular party, mm. but at each electoral cycle, they would look at the circumstances they think work for them and decide which way to vote. They vote all right, but they are not tied to any um, um, particular um, um, side and then they would decide. So you have that category mm. who would also look at different things mm. across the spectrum and decide what works for them. Right. Basically. Uh, yeah, Kofi, yeah. I, I want to come to you, but I, I'm going to focus it a bit more if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, let's let's see if we can start getting our hands a bit dirty all right, <laughs> with our analysis. <laughs> Uh, because we have we have something in our hands that we can we can assess. We have mm -hmm. a record we can mm -hmm. evaluate. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's evaluate the record of this government over the past four mm -hmm. years to see if they've done enough to mm -hmm. earn themselves another four. Yeah. And I want us to take the very broad but easily quantifiable area of resources. Mm -hmm. So this government has had more resources than any government in history of Ghana, mm -hmm. but it has also had more men and women. <laughs> To do the work with 100 and what 123 23 ministers if you were to take these two facts and apply it to the out the output would you say that this government has done enough to win um as an analyst it's difficult for me to pass a blanket um, um verdict on this without going through the analysis and looking at it so we should take it in that sense generally speaking this government hasn't done badly I mean, honestly, with everything put together, said and done, it's a pass mark. The problem is that this government set for itself very high expectations. So to that extent, people rate them against that expectation. And if you look at, look, look at inflation today, okay? Look at the number that, uh, that inflation represents today, given everything that has gone on you will see there's been some very competent management of the economy. But there's so many things that can be said, you know, about all kinds of things, the economic, social, and everything. But let's boil it down to this. What are the things on people's minds going into this election? And let me compare that to maybe four years ago. Four years ago, clearly Doomsaw was on your mind. Clearly corruption was on your mind. And something more important, and let me explain this. There are things that offend people, things that when you hear about, you see going on, it, it annoys you, it offends you. 
and then there are things that affect people. Kofi, I, 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 I hate cutting in like this, but um, this is election day. It's going to happen a few times. Right. Uh, we're hearing that, uh, uh, once again, we have some incident in Ododo Diu Diu. Bernice, um, uh, are you able to c connect us to the constituency for the latest? Definitely, Kojo. Uh Enes Kojomenu is a man there and he's joining us uh, with details on what's happening at Ododo Diodio. Hello Enes, what's the situation in Ododo Diodio now? Hello, Ernest, if you can hear me. Ernest is a man in the Diodio constituency. Uh, earlier we heard there was a bit of a situation there regarding uh, polling stations and voters having concerns about that. Uh, we understand that led to a, a bit of some pushing and shoving here and there. Uh, but Ernest, what's the situation there now? Yeah, so Bernice essentially was about the queue management and the voters here were agitating. They were not really excited with how the Electoral Commission uh, officials had managed the situation. Uh, it got a bit chaotic. The police had to come in, there was reinforcement, and then there was law, uh, there was order now, because a lot of them who had forced themselves into the compound of the city engineers uh, were moved outside and they were asked to form long queues again. And so right now it is peaceful. The measure that had been introduced, because they all rushed in, uh, they, they sort of crowded the entire voting area. And so the secrecy of the ballot uh, was not guaranteed. Now what they have done is to introduce another barrier uh, just before the, uh, where we have the Veronica buckets, uh, where you start the uh, hand washing you know, and go through the COVID protocols before you move to the verification table. So they've introduced one more barrier. We have these polling officials there directing them as to where exactly. So once you're admitted from the gate into the compound, you see any of these officers, they look at your code and direct you which booth or which table you should, uh, uh, you know, attend to or visit so you can have your details verified. And then, of course, before then you go through the hand washing and all the COVID-19 protocol. So it is quite peaceful here. Yeah. Uh, earlier, we also spoke to the uh, European Union, the observer mission. The chief observer uh, was also here. He spoke to us. He spoke highly of Ghana and the processes so far. Uh, they have been here months before the election to monitor the process and engage various stakeholders, including uh, civil society and some media organizations as well on the process leading to today. They're going to stay on a bit after the election. Uh, of course, they would organize a news conference to tell us about their observation and make recommendations as they've always done. Uh, so this is the latest from here, from the Ododo Diodo constituency, Bernice. Any of the parliamentary candidates uh, cast their ballot? Not yet. Um, we understand that Ni Lante Van der Poy will do that later in the days. From here, we're heading to that polling station. Uh, and then we'll be tracking Ni Lante Bannerman as well. Uh, we've been told where he's voting. And so we're monitoring, we're in touch with their teams. And once we get the signal that they'll be voting, uh, I mean, they'll be moving to the polling stations, we'll move there and bring you that live uh, exercise and also interact with them after they have cast their ballot. The presidential candidate for the PPP, Bridget Zodonuku, would also be voting in this constituency, we have been told. And so we are monitoring all of that for our viewers and listeners and we'll bring them up to speed every minute of the way. Thank you, our Ennis Menu is a man in the Ododo Diodio constituency. As you heard, calm has been restored and voting is going on smoothly as we even observe for those of you watching on television, uh, as he explained, uh, the area has been sort of cordoned off to uh, uh, prevent people from, you know, um, massing up around the voting area. He mentioned that the uh, issue of secrecy was a problem when uh, the people just rushed uh, into the premises. Uh, but let's go to Bunu East now. Precious Semevo is a man there. Precious, it's been almost three hours now uh, of voting. What can you report from Bunu East? Uh, Bono, I beg your pardon. Uh, Precious is coming to us from Bono region. Hello, um, um, Precious. What can you report? Yeah, Benny. So from the Bono region, uh, Sunyani East to be precise, 
Uh, the election started as expected at seven. Uh, the process so far has been smooth. Uh, one thing that most of the voters have been talking about uh, excitedly is that unlike previous elections, this time around the uh, process is so smooth because of the small number at every polling uh, station. For instance, at Abisim RC primary, we have about seven polling centers here. And what it means is that some of the polling centers uh, officials are virtually sitting down doing nothing as at now. But uh, before we even go more into that, I've been joined by Peter Ndombe. Uh, he is a uh, presiding officer at uh, one of the polling centers uh, here at Abyssin. So, Peter, thanks for joining us on Joy News. Thank you. What has been the process so far and what can you tell us? Oh, so far the process has been moving very fast because of the arrangements you see this for us. The voters are voting smoothly and they are very happy about the arrangements. Mm. Any, any complaint so far? Anyone struggling to find his name in the register? So far, there's no complaint. Each and every candidate, uh, each uh, voter, name is on the register. They have been all been verified through the DVD and there's no complaint as of now. Mm. So what about the Voters themselves uh, submitting themselves to the protocols, to the COVID-19 protocols. The protocols have been observed as expected. They are coming with the nose marks and we have the COVID ambassadors to, who will guide them through the process, take their temperature, they wash their hands and then sanitize before they vote. And then after voting, to, we will sanitize them and they leave. Hmm. At this center, what is the name of your center again? My center is RC from me. one. Hmm. And what is the total number of expected voters? 409. And at the last count, how many people have voted as at 930? At the last count, we have voted about 105 voters have voted. Hmm. All right. So, Benis, the indication is clear. If you can see behind me, a lot of, uh, some few people, some few Ghanaians still in the queue, uh, hoping to get the time to, to cast their votes. But it's been generally smooth and everything is going on smoothly here in Sunyanis. I can also tell you, I spoke to the constituency deputy youth organizer of the NDC, Vicent NPAJ, and he expressed the party's satisfaction uh, as far as the exercise is uh, concerned so far. He says that their agent has informed them that the EC officials are going and observing all the laid down uh, rules and that excites them and they are hoping that it will continue at uh, 5 p.m. And they are also hoping that those who are yet to step out of their various homes will come out and then cast their uh, ballots because there is no queue, the process is smooth and you will come here and not spend more than 10-15 minutes and then you go back and tell your daily activity. So, Benny from Sunyani is in the Bono region. It has been smooth. So, from the Bono region, uh, Sunyani is to be precise. I painted a picture of what's happening there. And uh, if you've been following the e election coverage and following the updates from the Electoral Commission, EC Chairperson Jen Mensa did say uh, that the Few numbers at polling stations is one of the reasons they expect to collate uh, the results quicker than usual. So we'll be keeping our eyes on that particular one. But let's take you now to the Western region, uh, specifically Chrissy Mintim, uh, where there are or were reports of roadblocks. Winifred Frederica Wemoto is there for us. Winifred, what can you tell us about the uh, reports of roadblocks in the Western region? Uh, planes, I don't know what's being burned, uh, but some roads in the Kwisimintim uh, district of the western region were blocked and uh, Winifred Frederick Agbemeto is there for us. Hello Winifred, can you tell us exactly what's being burned on the road there? Alright, so here the disturbances began at 3am 
um, angry residents were out on the road um, and burned some tires here. They were complaining that um, the MP for this constituency has not done enough for them, especially with regards to their roads. And um, they were facing difficulties, especially um, with regards to transport, sending people to the hospitals and things in that regard. And that made them block the road and burn some tires. So as at 6 a.m. today, cars were not able to um, use this road. Um, and if not for the intervention of um, the security agencies, the police, the fire service, and some soldiers which, who were present, um, the road would have still been blocked. Mm. And what if at 6 a.m. was an hour before the election started? So um, what can you report about the elections proper? Is it going on smoothly there? Yes, currently um, three of um, the polling stations at Rindo are functional and we have over 600 people who are expected to be voting currently. Um, right now we have the police present um, doing their work, ensuring that um, the place is safe for people to vote. And everything is moving smoothly. All right. Uh, uh, th there have been concerns about the adherence to COVID-19 protocols at some polling stations. Uh, are you observing the same where you are? Yes, we are observing um, the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, due to the disturbances, the security agencies are quite strict about them. So here, everybody at the polling stations are wearing their nose masks. We have water and sanitizers available as well, and people are observing the protocol. All right, uh, we'll leave it here for now. That's Winifred Frederick has been a talk coming to us from the Western region, reporting earlier about the incident in Kwesimintim, where some residents blocked the roads, burning tires, all in protest of their bad roads, and they chose to do it on election day. I mean, we understand that the police and um, other security forces were able to uh, bring the situation under control and election uh, voting has started there. Let's go to Ivy Setsuji, a woman in the Volta region. Hello, Ivy. Hello, Ivy. It's been almost three hours of voting and uh, we've heard reports of incidents here in Accra, but uh, in Sunyani East and in Kwesimintum, apart from what happened earlier in the day, it's a smooth process. What can you tell us about what's happening in the Volta region? Well, in the Volta region, it has been very, very smooth so far uh, in the places I have visited so far. Further from Bo, uh, to testing of where we uh, were searching the MP uh, Aveji and then the Minister uh, Jamashi to vote later in the day. There, the process uh, was very smooth, uh, but then turnout in most of the centres uh, was slow. Mm -hmm. And then, currently, I just go to uh, Northstone where we had uh, some rumor we wanted to check ourselves that uh, some group or uh, wants to cause some uh, problem here. Uh, so we wanted to follow up. So I'm currently in a very mayor and we want to follow up on that issue uh, where the MP for the area, Samuel uh, Black or Kujo, so, uh, will be voting or casting his vote in, in about 30 minutes. Uh, so here, everything is smooth. Uh, people are in queue, but not long queue. Uh, though, uh, but the whole place, everywhere we've been to so far, uh, is very calm. Mm, Ivy, during the voter registration exercise, uh, there were concerns about the presence of military persons in the Volta region and the possibility of that leading to voter suppression. Do, uh, do you see um, the, the presence of the military uh, as you crisscross polling centres? And have people been sharing similar concerns today? Well, yes, well, on our way to uh, uh, Aveime, when we got to Sugakope, the barrier itself, we saw a group of military men uh, sitting. Some were even enjoying coconuts or taking coconuts uh, just by the road. Uh, some were sitting uh, just by the road, just looking at uh, 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 the, the cars passing. Uh, apart from that, we are yet to see uh, other military or any other military map. But we've not spotted any military uh, personnel in any of the polling centers yet, except uh, uh, police in every uh, police center. Uh, so far, those were the people we saw drinking coconuts and just sitting by the roadside 
uh, relaxing. We, we actually don't know what they are doing there, but that was what we saw earlier. All right, uh, Ivy Setoji there coming to us from the Vault region and uh, speaking about the situation there. Thank you, Ivy. We'll leave it here for now and uh, allow you to visit other polling uh, centers and report what's happening there. But let's take you back to the Insawam prison where Seth Kwame Boating is and uh, he's now in the female yard. Hello, Seth. It must be an exciting moment for inmates as they cast their votes today. Hello, Seth. Seth, kindly unmute your device. Uh, we can't hear you. Because it's, it's not one of those days that they, they would have to carry and go back to their uh, cells because today they have been given the opportunity to exercise their franchise. And here are the female side, um, 46 inmates uh, registered. And as I speak, I understand about 40 of them. Uh, available to vote. Uh, the last night checked, about 20, 29 inmates had voted here at the female side. Um, the 46 who registered, two had gone home, but we are coming back to vote. And as for the, the male side, so I saw some inmates who uh, have been discharged, went home and are back to vote. Uh, this means a lot to them. We have several other ways from their leaders. Uh, hello, sir. It's quite difficult hearing what you're saying. It, it's a bit windy where you are. Because imagine 46 people registered, and as we speak, almost 30 have voted. Uh, it means they are uh, half through the process. So that is the case here at the uh, so medium security prison, the female side. But interestingly, as I said, uh, some inmates who have been discharged are back to vote. It means a lot to them. Mm, um, I'm have you been able to speak to any of them? Um, if you have, what have they been telling you? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, especially at the mill side, I saw some of them. My friends said, uh, 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 Too bad. Uh, we are interacting with them for and then come out. I'll be on standby to get some of them to speak to. I have with me here the presiding officer and welcome to join news. Uh, what's your name? Um, <laughs> mm. And so far, how far? Oh, the process is very good. Things are moving on smoothly. There's no problem as at now. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly said earlier on, we are having a total number of people registered in the 46. And we have almost about 30 of them casted their vote. Mm -hmm. So the process is still moving on. So uh, let's say if by 11, all of them have voted, are you going to count or are you going to wait until 5? The rule says that we are supposed to start counting at 5 p.m. So if even the time that is stipulated is even earlier than that. We would have to wait till five mm. before we do the counting. And how are you getting them to respect the protocols, the COVID protocols, and what measures have you put in place to ensure that they all comply? In fact, uh, the officers are, have really done a very good job. They are here with us and then they are helping as well. But with my team over here, in collaboration with the officers, things are very smooth over here. Mm. Right. Uh, ben, it's, um, I've been seeing this in the past, but here it looks like um, uh, a boarding house, you know, the well-regulated boarding houses, the, the well-kept boarding houses. That's how this um, prison is, the female side. <laughs> you, when you enter here, if you've not been here before, you you might wonder if this really a prison because the congestion, as we see at the male side, is not the case here at the female side, Dennis. <laughs> Seth, uh, we'll leave it here for now. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that a particular polling center in the female yard of the Insawan prison will be the first to finish uh, its work with regards to uh, registered persons voting. Uh, but we'll head now to the uh, to Adansi for Mena in the Ashanti region. We understand there's been an arrest. Nanayao Jima has details of that. Nanayao, what happened there? Hello, Nanayao. Well, we appear to be having a challenge with Nanayao's line, uh, but he'll be joining us shortly from uh, Adanse, from in the Ashanti region. Nanayao, we understand there's been an arrest there. Give us details. Right. So, I saw two people being arrested by a police patrol team, and these people were suspected, or allegedly, to have assaulted an electric after he cast his ballot. 
and then after he cast his balance and the electorate you are talking about is uh, he is a staunch supporter and a campaign team member of the independent parliamentary candidate in this constituency lawyer Andrew Esiama and if we can uh, give a brief history about the FOMNA election today one independent candidate Andrew Esiama is contesting NPP's Philip Oforiasante and there is an, an NDC candidate in the election who happens to be Mrs. Barabu. What, the, what is happening now is that the NPP is divided into two among the incumbent member of parliament who is now contesting as an independent candidate and Philip Ofori Asante who is the NPP candidate in the constituency and due to this there is a lot of tension on the ground the place have been declared as a flashpoint by the police so this morning what actually happened is that one man had cast his ballot and he was leave he had left the police station but according to him on his way he met some men and these men were accusing him of taking a snapshot of his ballot so he's here with me and i would have to ha i would want to have a brief interview with him to update us or give us truly ha ha what happened and how it happened and then i ever join us but you see the police center and i got my primary Enti matuma ba wi ya meba ena one guy paloma volume me me dey friends eh me me dey phone akọ ari na ni mu akuta am say me ni ko tuma me tuma me ko tuma ba me ni phone ja otio say wa ji bi ni phone bitami enti mi wi e na me dey e dey phone am dey call ari na me ko twa phone i need ballot na ari dey enti o me ni ka ya me twa tuna meba ti mi hu say kuzenti chama ko say dey be chairman and ni ka be so na guys bi macho for bi si ka ni mu as from it's me, but I'm not even mentioning the name of the man. I'm not even mentioning the name of the man. I'm not even mentioning the name of the man. I'm not even mentioning the name of the man. I'm not even mentioning the name of the man. I'm not even mentioning the name of the man. i I can't, uh, 580. 580. Uh, 580. So, uh, I'm going to say, snap, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to to so, so what he is telling me now is that um, after casting his ballot, these people met him on the way and accused him of taking a snapshot of his ballot. And due to that, two of these well-built men um, came out of the vehicle of the NPP constituency chairman, Chairman Akwesienti, allegedly came from the vehicle of Chairman Akwesienti and pounced on him and beat him up. And according to him, all that he was wearing at that moment was torn into pieces. So in, when we got here, we met a police patrol team who had picked two of these men and um, they've sent them away. These men had uh, an accreditation which claimed they are pulling agents hanging around their neck. And uh, police didn't give us much information of what happened but what we learned is that police have picked up these two men and also taken from them um, two machetes uh, which they had in their vehicle the, 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 this has left the people here in the Formula constituency uh, very angry some are disturbed and some are also others are afraid of what is happening here i would want to speak to um, a few of them and gauge the boy. mood of, of, of them. Uh, that, that's the that, 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 that,
Okay, so this is one of the residents here at Formula who is telling me that he is uh, he is threatened by what just happened and he will not encourage his child or his kid if um, he has attained the age to go and vote because there have been a number of incidents here and he feel the security of the election here in the formula constituency is threatened. So this um, th this kind of sentiment span across the formula constituency. Some of the people um, I've, I've, I've spoken with earlier are not happy and are afraid of what is happening. Now, and I, Aljima, we'll need you to get more details from the police and uh, hopefully a response from those who have been accused. But there in your shots uh, in Bole, you can see the NDC's presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama, going through the protocols. He's just washed his hands and he's cleaning them. He's just going to cast his vote. And so uh, for those of you watching on television and on my Joy Online and Joy News on TV, you can see uh, uh, there, there seems to be a challenge with uh, social distancing because you see a lot of people gathered just to catch a glimpse of the NDC's presidential candidate who is in an all-white uh, attire there. Uh, and, and you know how it happens here. When you wear white, you know what it means. <laughs> I'll leave you to uh, be the interpreter of that for yourself. But he's just walking uh, towards the voting area and uh, just seen a polling polling agent uh, there uh, and you see official at the polling center and uh, going through all the protocols and we know that when you arrive at the polling center what happens is that an assistant will check your particulars in the name reference list and i want to believe that's what is happening then a verification officer will verify your identity as a registered voter with a verification machine and uh, we're seeing there his um, little finger being put into the indelible ink. And um, later, we know the processes that happen when you visit a polling station. After that, you'll be issued with a presidential ballot paper. And uh, for those of you who have not yet cast your ballot, you need to check that it has no marks and ensure that it has a validating stamp. Okay, so there we've seen... Uh, the sheet has been handed Mr. Mahama. He's checking it to see if there are no marks and checking for the validating stamp as well. Okay, so he's just examining that presidential ballot paper that has been handed him. Okay, now the cameras are being asked to move while he enters his booth to cast his vote. All right, uh, some privacy there. Well, there's somebody holding his phone quite close. And, uh, well... Okay. There's someone with Mr. Mahama in his polling, uh, his voting booth, I beg your pardon, uh, there while he casts his ballot for presidential candidate. Uh, there you have it all. As you may be aware, once you've cast your ballot, you need to clean your hands so you don't stain the sheet while folding it. And that's exactly what Mr. Mahama is doing folding his sheet and you must fold it in a vertical manner not horizontal because if you fold in horizontal uh, you're likely to have uh, a stain on another candidate's you know portion for voting so he's done that he's cast his ballot is done for presidential and uh, then you move on to parliamentary so he's been given a sanitizer again and a polling station assistant there who will hand over the parliamentary ballot paper to him. And he will go through the process again, proceed to the voting booth for parliamentary and thumbprint on his choice of NP.
This is your election headquarters on Joy 99.7 and the Joy News Channel. We are also streaming live on our Facebook platforms and myjoyonline.com. Thank you for choosing us. We are your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. What's happening now is uh, we are live in Bole where the NDC's presidential candidate, John Dramani Mahama, is casting his ballot. He's already done that for presidential and now doing it for the parliamentary Well, he's done now, folded his sheets, dropped it in the ballot box. And you can see some people around uh, cheering him on, showing the, the, the peace sign, which has now become a symbol of the MPP. Because, and sorry, I beg your pardon, the NDC, because they are number two on the ballot sheet. So that's John Dramani Muhammad there. Some people trying to interact with him even after he's cast his ballot. Um, clearly in a nose mask. You can see quite a number of people in nose masks there, but social distancing uh, not happening at all. Uh, quite a number of people thronging him as he makes his way to his vehicle. And in her case, her name is in the special voters list. No, she has not applied for that. Now I allow her to vote because right, so the name is there. Right now, and the name is there for the NDC. Uh, okay. How do you find the process? There's a bit of a. Um, how did you see the process? I counted in minutes. You did it in less than three minutes. Yes. How do you see the process? Um, well, there was no queue, and uh, that is uh, usual of this polling station. I've voted here since 1992, and. Um, the process has been very simple, very smooth, and so, I mean, I voted mm. presidential parliamentary, and as you said, under three minutes, yeah. Not sure you've done any monitoring yet, but what do you pick generally, I'm sure you've been speaking to your team on the ground, what do you pick up generally? Uh, it's too early here to make an assessment, but um, there are a few hitches, like, I mean, this polling station, there's a lady here, she's got her card, her card is from this station but her name is not on the list. One of my security personnel, I registered here, here with him, and during the exhibition, we checked his name was there, but we got here today, his name is not there. And so, I don't know if it's a generalized problem, but like I said, it's too early here to make an assessment. You're gonna get that rectified, is it? We don't know, uh, we're waiting to find out what the uh, uh, electoral presiding officer will say. And uh, we hope that they can rectify it. But these are some of the little things that we kept complaining about. I mean, the Electoral Commission said they had eliminated 30,000 names from the register without saying whose names they were. And I said that on the day people are going to come without knowing that their names have been taken off. Because if you take their names off, you must give them a reason why you're taking their names off. Mm. So now one of my security details' name is not there. He's got his card. He registered here. Exhibition, his name was there. We don't know what accounts for that. Uh, 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 talking about challenges, last night we got some indication, uh, some release from the Electoral Commission that had to do with the Buem constituency. I'm sure that has come to your notice. What do you make of it? Um, well, I haven't picked anything up. I didn't hear anything about that. There will be the presidential elections, but because of the creation of the Guan Assembly or two, whatsoever, they are unable to ah, you do said Buem. the parliament. Yes, Buem, Buem not here. Buem constituency. No, Buem in the OT region. Buem is having presidential and parliamentary. It's Guan. Guan, Guan, Guan. Yes, yes, yes. Guan. yes. So there will not be the parliamentary in a Guan constituency. Yeah, we've always known that because uh, the process is for. Um, 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 creating the constituency were not completed and so they can't have parliamentary elections but we have always known that they're going to have presidential elections alone yeah finally his excellency my name is redwan i work with gh1 tv what are your expectations in the next few days so that it should go smoothly and that there should be no incidents um, the way you saw um, the atmosphere here i hope that it's going to be the case uh, all over the country and if that happens, it means voting will go smoothly. And I hope that counting and collation will follow the same pattern. Your Excellency, 
Well, um, elections are made up of before, during, and after. We had reservations about the before. Now we're in the during. And so we'll still wait and see. Well, it's very early yet. It's only 10 o'clock. We're going to fry. We don't know what will start happening after a few hours. And so let's wait and see. Your Excellency, and good morning. Good morning. Who say what the two are about this year? Yes. Quickly, no process, no what film. And then I'll be caca quickly. Oh well, my polling station has been since 1992. Now you had the maybe a son a kono, maybe a kosuye, basa basa biye ni ha. Obanswa, you had say normally one bet one bet to send it back at the line and ask something. And the metro and them and I'm married. And it's gone as I expected. But your best chance is near Koso or Baby Baby Baby. I feel now about ten. Any other room will be behind you. Your chance is near Koso. So far, so far, so early. 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 So far, or register it. Exhibition, you have a check here, you don't need one. And so you don't buy any of them. Now, my man, any reason, you say, I'm not a man, if you want to say, you can't be the answer. I'm not a man, you can't be the answer. I'm not a man, you can't be the answer. And I'm not a man, I'm not a man, I'm not a man. Let's let us look in Bunja. If progresses and issues come up, what will you do? If what happens? If it progresses and issues continue to pop up, what would be your stand as a party? Well, um, what would be our stand? I mean, it will depend on what comes up, and it will depend on how widespread it is, and so it's very difficult to preempt and say what you will do when you don't know exactly what is going to happen, the nature of what is going to happen. But some of the issues have started coming, missing names and some phrases, verification machines, not picking people. These are issues that have already started coming in. It means we stand vindicated. These are the issues we're warning the EC about. Remember I said that on the day, it's possible that their verification machines might not work because they failed to deploy and test them during the exhibition. They tested only 5,000 of them. We have almost 40,000 polling stations. And so I, I, I was cautioning that on the day, these are some of the things will, 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 that will happen. 30,000 names taken out. They didn't tell us who they are. Who knows, my security man might be one of those whose names was taken out. He's come here, his name is not on the, on the register, but he's got his card, he registered here. He came for the exhibition, his name was there, you know, so how his name is not here, we cannot tell. But, like I'm saying, we cannot yet see the scale of it. It's only 10 a.m. and we're still receiving reports from all our polling stations because we have our agents reporting any incidents that happen. And so until I get an appraisal of it, then we know whether it's a very widespread thing or if there's a pattern to it or it is just uh, a one-off incident. The NDC's presidential candidate, John Romani Muhammad, is speaking to uh, the press after casting his vote in Bali. Well, he's raised some concerns about his security, a uh, man not finding his, his name in the list. And, uh, well, let's hand over to Kojo now. I will come and do uh, more details from the polling centres. Uh, but we understand, Kojo, uh, that there's a bit of situation somewhere. Uh, the situation is on Twitter, of all places. Uh, and uh, by the way, keep using the hashtag ElectionHQ every time you tweet so that we'll see what you're saying and we'll share it with the world. Uh, the police have been tweeting, um, and I'm going to read what they're saying, okay? This is allegedly something that happened in Sunyani, right? So it says, police confirm the arrest of one Daniel Tibiri Boahin. A civilian uh, cited driving a police Nissan pickup vehicle with registration number G for golf, P for Papa, 
3329 on the night of the 6th of December 2020 by the youth of Sunyani who handed him over to the police. It goes on to say a little bit more. The police have impounded the vehicle, which was auctioned earlier this year um, and uh, uh, by appointed auctioneers as an unserviceable vehicle after going through due processes to one Abu James at Bongo in the Upper East region. Investigation continues. And this is something that the Ghana police have just put up. Uh, it apparently happened in Sunyane. Uh, e e even as um, the election has been ongoing. Uh, but, uh, of course, it's not related to the election. Um, but I'll tell you what is related to the election on Twitter. Uh, and that is what you have been saying. So we, we asked the question uh, as to whether you are voting from the Odododio Dio constituency. We wanted to know uh, how the voting was going for you. And a lot of your uh, tweets have been coming in um, in response to this. And I will share those with you. Uh, all of your thoughts. Um, but that well, that's uh, got. We'll have to uh, pay a bit of attention to that later. Uh, one other question we were asking was whether you have voted yet. Now, at this time of the morning, you can see uh, that thirty-one percent of you have voted. Uh, Sixty-eight point seven percent of you uh, who have been responding to this particular tweet have not yet voted, uh, um, and you've been giving several reasons. Uh, some of you say you haven't had the urge yet to vote. Uh, but of course you're all watching us which is <laughs> the first important step hopefully that will give you the urge to go out there and exercise your mandate uh, a lot of you saying that you will go soon uh, so we certainly want to know how your experience goes when you go out to vote okay uh, to those of you who haven't yet at Yusuf Musa 4 we, we've got our eyes on you Yusuf go out there and cast your ballot okay your nation needs you now in a short while, we'll take you live to Nima, where the president will be voting. Uh, but before that, we're going to wrap up quickly with our guests in the studio. We've been talking with Kofi Bentel and Clara Berry Cassati all morning. They've been giving us such insights. And uh, I can't thank you both enough. Uh, but I think this is the point at which we'll hear the last from you uh, so that uh, we can bring in a fresh pair of lungs. Uh, but Kofi, you were making a point before we, uh, we went off around the country. So I was making the point, the question was about uh, what are the main issues on people's minds now. And the point I was making was that there are things that offend people and things that affect them. In the last election, you had Dumso. Mm. It offended people and affected them as well. And then you had the issue of corruption, which people connected to the Dumso, etc. Mm. So to them, corruption both was offensive and also affected them. This time, however, you have a situation where free SHS is on people's minds. Mm. Free SHS does not offend them, but affects people positively. Mm. And clearly, it is working for the ruling party. Then you have the issue of corruption, which offends people. But that connection is not being made this time as strongly as it was made the last time. So if you ask me what's on people's mind right now, governance is on people's minds. You remember the, in 2016, the refrain was incompetence, incompetence, they don't run the country well. And doom so, you know, underline that very well. Okay, this time governance is on people's minds, but which aspect of governance? So, yeah, you can complain, but which aspect of it is offending and affecting people? It's not very clear. Hmm. Corruption is being talked about, but is it really something that the ordinary person feels is affecting them? No. Incidentally, the free SHS issue is a positive. Mm. So for me, the things on people's minds as far as the MPP is concerned, okay, are things that may even offend but may not affect them. That's interesting. I wonder if, Clara, you, you feel the same way about this offend, aff affect, you know, dynamic, especially when it comes to issues of governance. Is it true that Ghanaians this time around are not as affected by issues of corruption, you know, a Japa, cash for seats, um, you know, Australia, all, all, of, all of these corruption issues have not affected, as Kofi, um, you know, analyzes? Um, yeah, there's a view there, not just um, Kofi expressing that view, but there's a view um, there that this time um, yeah, around corruption is not um, so much affecting people. If you look at our, our history, right from independence, corruption has always been the driving force for change and all of that. 
I do not necessarily share the view that corruption is not affecting people. I just think um, that whether you are able to, how you are able to communicate the corruption for them to understand is, is when they get affected or mm. they don't get affected by it. Yes, I, uh, I have heard the views being expressed that maybe we are all corrupt people, Ghanaians are corrupt mm. people, so they don't, I don't, I, I don't necessarily um, share that view. I know that there are circumstances, if we are going to go into why people do what they do, we get to see why they do what they do, but I don't think it is in, innately just so they are. Sometimes people do what they do because what are the options available to them and all of that. But if, you look, if, you, if you've looked at our history, and even through the coup d'etat, not just democratic governance, throughout the coup d'etat, corruption has always been top of the agenda why people have, uh, mm. have decided to take over the reins of government. So Ghanaians do feel strongly about corruption. Mm. How we have discussed it um, um, this year going forward, and probably because of our history coming into the, this election, has affected a lot of the way that it, the discussion has gone. But I do not think that Ghanaians are, uh, are coming to accept that they want corruption. Mm. I don't think that Ghanaians as a people um, um, want corruption. Mm. Whether they are giving up is a different discussion. Mm. But I think that generally we do want um, 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 good governance. But it's not the only... Well, we'd have to take you off from Studio 997, head straight to the Eastern region. The president has arrived in Chibi. Uh, we are expecting that he will cast his vote. And Elton Brobe is there for us. Hello, Elton. Tell us what's happening with the president. Okie dokie. So we have the visuals. Uh, the president also going through the COVID-19 protocols, also in white, and uh, washing his hands there. Temperature being checked by a nurse at the polling station. Uh, hands sanitized as well and uh, a lot of people are there as you'd expect and uh, the president is going through the usual process uh, like I ran you through with former president John Dramani Mahama his name is being checked on the list and um, on the reference list and their verification officer will then verify his identity with the verification machine then he'll be issued the presidential ballot paper so the president is going to go through all those protocols and cast his vote in chibi hello alton yes i can uh, quite um a scene there as people have gathered to observe the president cast his vote. Uh, we have seen that he's handed over his voter ID card to a polling assistant. Uh, tell us what's happening on the ground as well. the polling station the president is will be at this point it's quite noisy it sounds it's as if there's someone making an announcement uh, but i would love you if you can uh to either project so we could hear you clearly or just move away a bit from the crowd and for those of you watching on television and other uh medium uh, apologies uh for the uh, the, the loss in our feet there from chibi uh, but we are still there live on the ground 
uh, working uh, the lines to get clearer photographs and pictures for you. But what it is is that President Kufado is in Chebi just about to cast his vote. He's gone through the COVID-19 protocols and the verification as well. And hello, Elton. Uh, let's, let's hope we have a better line now. So just yes. uh, fill us in with what's happening. What is happening is that we just finished casting the ballot. We're going to put the paper on the ballot box, and that will be done. Uh, that, that will be done with the process of voting. We just finished uh, casting the ballot box, and this is the ballot paper into the current ballot box. And that will conclude uh, an exercise for this morning here in the KBG Coast Town in the South and 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 when we'll be given a follow-up containing the uh, valid people are contesting on the city from the MTC in the Puan Puan Town constituency here in the Eastern region. And the MTC candidate, the Minister for Western Health, Minister for Alakashia, President of the Kupada has just been given the valid people containing the local contestation in the parliament. And we've done it with the presidential one, but it was reported. And now we've been given uh, a statement to... Apologies once again uh, for that loss in feed there. And Elton Brobe was just running us through what President Kufado is doing at that polling station in Chebi. Uh, he's done with his presidential vote. He's now casting his ballot for parliamentary candidate. Uh, but as you may know, that's the president's hometown. And uh, the, the people there have thronged the polling station. Uh, some just to catch a glimpse of the president. We're expecting uh, that he, he will speak to media persons after going through the process. But as we've observed with uh, President Ekufodo and former President Mahama, it's been quite a smooth process and a, a free of hitches, at least for the two of them. They've gone through the process smoothly. Uh, Mr. Mahama has had concerns, though, that his security man could not find his name in the list. Uh, but the president is done with voting in Chibi now. Uh, we expect that uh, the media may have an interaction with him. Uh, my colleague, Elton Brobe, is there for us to bring us all you need to know. Uh, but we know that the NDC's presidential candidate has voted. Well, the vice uh, uh, candidate... Professor Nana Jinopokwajuman also did so a while ago. Well, good morning. Good morning, also then. Yeah, I just to pay the because I just watched my okay. Okay, okay, okay. This is your election headquarters on Joy 99.7 FM. We are all over the country bringing you all you need to know about the 2020 general presidential and parliamentary elections. Uh, just uh, we're bringing you uh, the candidate, vice presidential candidate of the NDC, Professor Jane Anna Opokwa uh, who just cast her vote a while ago in Cape Coast. Uh, she went through the COVID-19 protocols as usual. And uh, you see her walk up, uh, her temperature being taken now. And from there, she will head to a polling assistant to uh, get her name on the reference list and then she will be verified on the verification machine and then she will cast her vote uh, and uh, well it's, it's less crowded than what we've seen in fact I don't see any crowd at all compared to what we experienced with uh, President Kufado and former President John Dramani Mahama uh, quite a calm area where uh, she is voting or has voted voted in Cape Coast uh, and you know we've spoken to you about uh, the importance of that region in this year's election. Uh, it's a swing one and uh, whoever wins that uh, will be critical for the general outcome in the elections and so we're keeping our eyes uh, in that particular region and uh, bring you all you need to know as well uh, as what's happening in other polling stations. Well, So she's been verified there as you can see. Uh, 
on that verification device. That's what you advise us. Huh? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Continuing coverage of election 2020 on your election headquarters and our coverage is brought to you in association with Petrosol Clean Fuel in full quantities, always a delightful experience. Cowbell Coffee, taste it, love it. McDonald Shipping and Logistics Limited, your total logistics partner. Pat Ever Limited, your home of modern furniture and core efforts, the immune booster for your general well-being and this just there in your shots you saw professor nana jeno pokwadraman going through uh the process of voting we know that she's gone through that um, uh, just uh, a while ago and uh, we'll be bringing you more analysis on that particular uh region the central region because in 2016 the NPP's Nanado Danko Kufado won that region and uh, we know that that is an important region. It's also a swing region. So it's important uh, in this year's election, whoever wins that and the potential it has on the general outcome. So we're keeping our eyes on that particular region. I'm Bernice Abubedu Lansa and we'll be taking you to more constituencies more polling stations and uh, bring you a feel of what's happening around the world don't forget we are very interactive tweet at us comments on our facebook section uh with the hashtag election hq and we'll be uh, willing to re-echo your concerns and your contributions to the rest of the world i am bernice abubedo lansa i am in akokumlimli studios uh, uh, join new studios, I might say, in Kukumlimli. And Kuja Yangsin uh, is at Studio 997 uh, with our guests bringing us more details. Uh, we'll be taking you to the smart wall shortly where we'll be doing some analysis, breaking down the, the trends, talking about the swing regions, why they are important, looking at voter turnout and what it really means. We've been hearing from all the candidates and even from the Electoral Commission, eve of election day, asking every voter to come out and vote. What is the importance of voter turnout in the outcome of the elections. We'll be doing all those analysis here on your election headquarters. And let me just quickly run you through what you must look out for or what you must expect if you haven't gone to your polling center or station to cast your vote yet. Please, when you go, follow all the protocols. And after you've washed your hands, make sure you are in a mask. A polling assistant will check your particulars in the name reference list. After that, a verification verification officer will verify your identity with the verification machine you'll be issued with a presidential ballot paper now this is where it gets very very important please check to see if it has no marks on it and ensure that it has a validating stamp if there are marks on your ballot paper or it is without a validating stamp your vote doesn't count and I'm not sure you'd want that to happen, okay? So once you have been given the presidential ballot paper, make your way to the voting booth and thumbprint your choice of candidate, fold it vertically and then horizontally and drop it in the ballot box. So let's take you back to Chebi. Presidential correspondent Elton Brobe is there for us. Hello, Elton. Yes, Bernie. Uh, so the president just finished uh, casting his body so soon. Uh, the media, uh, where we express his confidence in the ability of the Electoral Commission to conduct a credible, free, fair, and transparent election. And he said that he is very confident of winning the elections. Uh, so, so now that he's done both, he will go back home, relax, and then uh, monitor the situation across the country. When everything is done and dusted, uh, they will be there for research of their own policing centers. They will be monitoring the system. Uh, as far as he is concerned, his confidence of victory. It appeals to everybody that they should become, they should go out and vote. And to help people to go and exercise their constitutional rights. 
Uh, that was his message to the people. But overall, said that uh, he's very confident of winning. He's very confident the electoral committee will declare him winner in the in, in this ongoing general election when everything is done in that set. Elton Brobe there joining us from Chebi in the Eastern Region, giving us a wrap of what's happened with regards to President Ekufado casting his vote. We know uh, that his vice, Dr. Baumia, did so earlier in the day. And um, in Wale Wale, we've seen Mr. Mahama and Bole, and we've seen uh, Professor N N J. Nano Pokwajiman, I beg your pardon, in Cape Coast. We're keeping our eyes on the other candidates and we'll let you know what's happening with them as well. This is your election headquarters. Uh, we go to Daniel Dazi, who is with the Smart Wall. Hello, Daniel. What do you have for us? Well, Bernice, first of all, very exciting coverage we have so far, but you've been talking about turnout and I want to quickly illustrate here on the Smart Wall what it means. This is the 2016 election. It's the lay of the land as we have. Now take a look at this figure, 69.25%. In this election, there was a change in government. Let's go back and I'm going to quickly allow the smart fault wall to bring us figures from the 2012 election. Let me resize the map to make it easier to view. 79.43%. We had an incumbent government at retain power. 2008, what happens here? I'll go to the first round because it's the first round really that determined what happened later. 69.52%. Now, I'll just do one more election to illustrate properly what I'm looking at. Um, now, of course, 69.25% for the 2008 election, there was a change in government. 85.1% for the 2004 election, a government was retained. You're seeing a trend here, Ben, as I'm sure, that whenever there's a voter turnout of less than 70%, it looks like it doesn't bode well for the government in power. The incumbent is changed. So what the NPP will be looking for, if this time round they want to maintain this, um, they want to retain power, is for a voter turnout to go north of 70%. Um, um, hopefully about 80% thereabouts. So that's the first thing. Now, of course, Ben, since morning, we've been talking about the swing regions. Now, if you look at data that we have, it will show you that the winning presidential candidate since 1996 picks up these three regions, the Western, the Central, and the Greater Accra region. So if we can make that argument, you see that these are the true neutrals, uh, Ben, is now. The, the interesting thing here is that I've been doing a bit of searching using um, cross-tabulating with other data sets that we have. And you know the Afrobarometer has had about eight rounds of surveys where they ask a critical question, who will you vote for if election day is today? Now let me create some space here very quickly. Um, let me take out the national statistics so that um, our viewers can see this better. And of course all of this is made possible by our smart wall and it's the best election analysis technology that you can find. Right, so let me quickly activate my pen here. Benes, look at this, this is very interesting. In the year 2012, in that round of the Afrobarometer survey, they zeroed in on persons who have said they do not feel aligned to any political party. Now, I argue that it's people in the Western, Central and Greater Accra regions who have demonstrated this the most by how they vote. Whenever they vote for you, you win in an election. That means that they voted equal times for both the NDC and the NPP. When they asked the question of that group, the NDC and the NPP had 44%. Both of them in 2012 had 44% of that group of people saying they would vote for the NDC and they will vote for the NPP. When it came down to 2014, I'm going to quickly clean this up because I want to create more I want to create some more space here. So I'll try and make this figure a bit smaller, Bernice. Okay, so this is 2012, right, Bernice? Mm -hmm. Great. Now, when it came to 2014, the year, as in the, sort of the midterm election for the NDC, right? The NDC pulled 32%. This is NDC, right? Okay. The MPP pulled 51%. In, in which of the region? Now, in the Afrobarometer survey, what happens is that they 
you can narrow in on those who say they are not aligned to any any political party. At okay. All. Now I contend that it is these three regions who have demonstrated the most that they are not aligned to any political party at all, because whenever they vote, they have changed their voting patterns. And in fact, even when President Mills, a native of the Central Region, mm -hmm. stood. He lost in 2000, he lost in 2004, he came back to win in 2008. So it looks like for them, they don't see any alignments to any political party. Now in 2014, the MPP pulled 51%, the NDC pulled 32%. Okay. And of course, there wasn't a survey in 2015 or 2016, but I want you to look at the 2019 figures, right? The 2019 figures had the NPP pull 50 Eight percent mm. in the Afrobarometer survey. In that Afrobarometer survey, had the NDC pull thirty-five percent. Now it still looks impressive for the MPP, doesn't it? However, if you compare it to twenty seventeen, the MPP's figures are going down because the MPP pulled sixty-five percent in twenty seventeen. Mm -hmm. The NDC pulled twenty-eight percent in twenty seventeen. That means that the NDC's popularity is going higher. But the question is. Will it go high enough for them to topple that victory that N NPP had in 2016? Why is that important? Now, Melissa, I'll quickly remove um, this here and I'll come back to this because the 2012 election was, for all intents and purposes, it was a landslide for John Mahama. Look at his tally in the Western region, for mm. instance, and I'll take you to the regional statistics here. NPP 8 seats, NDC 18 seats. He wiped the, 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 mm -hmm. the, the Western region, really. Took a number of key constituencies there. But let me look at, let's look at what happened. Let me remove this regional statistic. Let's look at what happened in 2016. President Ekufuado dramatically turns around this tally. Mm -hmm. NDC now has, NPP now has 16 seats. NDC has 10 seats. Okay. There have been numerous analysis about what actually caused this change. How it, how it became that the NDC lost so much popularity within that four-year period. But I contend that this period, the NDC must hope that not only would the NPP lose that popularity from 2016 to, 20, to 2020, but they would also gain enough popularity so that they can win the election. I'll take you to a couple of the constituencies that are quite interesting. Let me look at presidential constituency in 2016, for instance, um, in the, the Western. Western region. Right. So our smart for again, it's so it's so exciting. It allows us to do any kind of thing mm. that we want to do. Jomoro constituency was picked up by the NPP in 2016. Mm. But look at Jomoro. Let me look, let me pull the trends for you. In 2016, the NPP picks it up, presidential and parliamentary. However, in 2016, Bernice, this was the first time the NPP had picked up Jomoro constituency mm. since 1996. Since 1990, even though the NPP won in 2000 and 2004 presidential, Show. in parliamentary. 1996 mm. parliamentary, the NDC picked it up. Now, look at the 2000 figures. You see that the NDC won with only 33.4%. Why is the, is the question that anybody will ask. So let's go to the parliamentary figures for the year 2000 election to, for me to show you an interesting statistic concerning the westernmost part of the western region or the general constituency. Now, of course, yesterday, if you were listening to Winston and Evans, they contend, and I agree with them totally, that the western region currently, after the western north has been removed, remains a swing region. So you want to look at and, and what really happens there. I want parliamentary results from the year 2000. I'm in Jomoro, right? All right, so, um, wow, okay. Okay, so here we have Joseph Aka of the NDC picking it up, 33.4%. Peter uh, Nwawan of the NPP trailing with 19.1%. But if you look at the rest of the candidates, you realize that the CPP's Abraham Yangsen actually picked up. Pardon me, this is Jomoro. The CPP's Abraham Yangsen actually picked up 15% of the votes in 2000. That means the CPP is a strong force. And if you actually look at the trend analysis, you see in the year. Okay, so I need to come back to 2016 
for, for us to get a proper lay of the land as far as trends are concerned. So if you look at the trend analysis, you see that the CPP actually came to the point of making a showing. This is Samia Yabankoma's constituency. In the year 2008, she won. Mm -hmm. I remember very well, Leo Kran, who was the incumbent MP of the, of the area, said that he wasn't going against Samia, he was going against the ghosts of Kwame Nkrumah. Because in the westernmost parts of the western region, this is actually where Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the founder of mm -hmm. the CPP, and of course, one of the founding fathers of the country is from. Another interesting point here, about the Western region, and we could go on and on and on, is that the population, right, now the population is concentrated, now let me, let me just draw this for you, right, the population is concentrated around the circle that I've shown you. Why? If you look at the data that we have crunched for you, the population, Right, the population of the Western region, 40% of it is in the urban areas, 25% of it is in the five constituencies that fall within the regional capital, the traditional regional capital that we know. Takrade, Sekendi, Iskado Keten, there is Efia, there is Kwesimintim, and there is, of course, and there's Iskado Keten mm. in there. So, Benis, that's how the lay of the land is as mm. far as some of the swing constituencies, uh, as far as some of the trends mm. of their votes are concerned. All right, Jada, we'll come back to you and that smart wall for more. But that's what my colleague Daniel Dazi uh, given us some analysis in helping us understand what's really at stake in the western region and the central and greater Accra region. So he's just giving us more uh, details of the western region and shortly he will do so for the central and Western regions. We were in the Jomoro constituency where he's shown us the dynamics of voting there and that even though the NPP won in 2000 and in 2004, they didn't win parliamentary in that in those same years and so uh, it tells you how that particular uh, constituency in the western region votes we'll be going back to the smart wall because uh, there's just a lot more analysis we need to do uh, but this is your election headquarters and brought to you in association with petrosol cowbell coffee mcdam shipping and logistics limited pad ever limited and coa fs i'm benis abubedilan so do stay with us we'll be back with more